Hey guys, it's Crystal with Pure, and just for a few minutes I want to talk about Adobe Camera Raw and Adobe Bridge. These are the tools that are included with Photoshop CC 2015, and there are older versions that include these also. And we use these to edit our photos, especially I use this to edit wedding images and just other photo sessions. And so I wanted to show you how to maximize these programs. So first, if you have Photoshop, you can access a bridge by either going to your applications and your programs and double clicking on the BR one for Adobe Bridge, or you can come up to Photoshop, file, and hit browse and bridge, and it will open bridge up. And right here, you can navigate to, or over here, to the folder that you want to edit. And so I'm just going to kind of show you when I do our raw editing for weddings and even portrait sessions, I like to call inside a bridge. And so the way I do that is I select the very first image and I hit the space button, the space bar, and it will bring that image full size. And so now I can navigate through all those images that you just saw by clicking the arrow button, right? And so you can see this it was a behind the scenes. I was I took a video of the vi I took a picture of the videographer doing his job. So so now I can call these images and apply a star rating to them and that is how I know which images to edit and which images have been edited. So the shortcut to apply a star rating is command 1 through command 5. And command 1 will be a 1 star rating, command 2 2 star, command 3. You'll notice in the lower left hand corner here 3 star, command 4, 4 star, command 5, 5, and command 0 will wipe out the star rating. And so when I do mine, I've done videos in the past showing our workflow process, and I'm not sure if I've revised my workflow process since that video was made, but I have done some tweaks. And again, it's only because I, I find things that work better, offer more consistency and faster workflow, so I will, I'm always changing my workflow. But right now what I do is I will give a five star rating to a photo I want to keep. I don't bother with tagging or deleting or rejecting photos or anything like that because I feel like that's just an extra step and an extra key that I need to push that I don't, that I have to push that I don't need to push. So what I do is I rate everything a five that I want to keep. And so you'll notice these have all been rated a five. So if I wanted to rate this, if I didn't want this image, it or if I wanted this image and it was not rated yet, I just do command five and then press the arrow button and go to the next image. Okay. So then once I go through all the images from the wedding, I think we took like 4,500 images at this wedding. Then I will come up here and filter by my stars. So I'm not going to do one or more stars. I'm only going to do show five stars. And the reason I do that is because now I can edit these images. So let me go ahead and bring up show five stars. Okay. So now I can edit these images. So I can select these three images here. So I can select one, hold down the shift key, select the next one. And when I edit my images, I always edit the same grouping together. So I may actually select that image also, and I'll edit those. And then I'll come down and I'll select all of these and add all these together because they're the same lighting, the same setup. So I know I can batch process those images if that makes sense. The same with these type of images. I can do all of these the same because they were in the same setting, same lighting. I can edit and do a batch edit there. So let me go ahead and open these. So I'll hit enter and it will open up into camera raw since they are raw files. And this is where we have our camera raw. So I'm just going to kind of go through a few things here. So you have your images here that are, that you're editing. And so this is your white balance tool right here. So the process, the thought process behind that is you click something in the image that should be neutral, like white or 50% gray, and you can click it and it will adjust the white balance to what the photo should be. This is a little warm for me. Obviously I don't feel like that's, that's spot on. I feel like the original was better. I tend to shoot custom white balance or in Kelvin. And so I feel like I get the white balance pretty accurate in camera. Sometimes I shoot auto if I don't have time to 
adjust the settings, but I, I almost always will shoot Kelvin or custom white balance. And so I have these images here and I feel like this one wasn't edited yet. That was raw. This one has been edited. It looks like so I can click default and this was the raw image right here. And then we go right here and click default. And this was the raw image for this one. Okay, so what I'll do is I will edit this image and I'll show you how I batch. So first let me go over the tool. So this is your red eye, this is your targeted adjustment tool, sorry. So you can click this and you can click an image, a place in your image and move up, and move over and it, it will target the edit to that specific area. I don't use this tool very often, but it is a nice tool to use if you, if you like that. This is your crop button. And so you just drag and drop your crop and one of the things that most people don't know about is if the crop looks like this, you can right click and click show overlay. And as I was learning photography and learning composition, I really loved this tool because it showed me the rule of thirds. And sometimes as a new photographer, we forget that, you know, sometimes things are more pleasing to the eye when they fall into the rule of thirds. And so I would use that as a tool. Now I don't necessarily need it as much because I, I can look at, a, at an image and, and tell where the rule of thirds is. And sometimes I don't feel like the image needs to be in the rule of thirds, especially this image in particular, because the rule of thirds here is going to want me to significantly crop this image. And while I want to crop the bottom part of this chair out, I still want to keep some of the gold here and the veil and the chair. So it's not going to specifically fall into the rule of thirds, but I have other images that will, so I feel like I'm okay. So I'll go ahead and raise the exposure on this. And actually one of my favorite actions is basic workflow with no brightening. And then I can come back over here and lower the vignette. So this is FX is like your vignette here. And so I feel like I don't want a vignette, so I feel like that's good. So, and with your presets, there's instructions to install presets when you download presets. And so I won't cover that right now, but it's, it's fairly simple to install and then they'll all show up here. And so this is your white balance tool. This is your color sampler tool. I did a video on that already showing how to use that to get the proper white balance, the target adjustment tool, the crop tool. This is your straightening tool. It works in conjunction with your crop tool. You can start push down your mouse and then drag over what should be a straight line and it will automatically adjust the crop to fit that to straighten it so if you feel like it overcompensated at all you can also manually adjust it by coming up to the corner and rotating it that way okay so now you've got your spot removal tool and there's really not anything in here that i would remove spot wise so I, i'm not really worried about that I mean, I may, guess maybe if I wanted to get picky, I could remove that spot, but then I don't do a lot of spot removal inside of RAW. I feel like it's not as uh, precise as maybe the clone tool or the spot removal tool inside of Photoshop. So I tried to do as little in, as possible inside of RAW. Then you have your adjustment brush, and I really like this. So here you can lower the exposure or raise the exposure. I'm going to go ahead and lower the exposure a little bit and lower the clarity a little bit. And I'm going to make the big ba the brush bigger by using my bracket keys next to the letter P. The one closest to the P will lower will make it smaller and the one farthest away from the letter P will make it bigger. Always make sure your flows uh, between 80 and 100%. If not, you're going to get a very uh, dominant line and it's not going to blend with the photo. And so I'll just go ahead and start kind of lowering the exposure around here and see what that did. Like I automatically like that. Now I can click erase. I feel like I got some of it just on the shoe a little bit. And so I'll just erase some of that off. Then if I click new, I can hover over this and I can see where it's gray right now. I can see where, um, I got where I hit it, I guess. I can also right here click mask and I can change the color of the mask. So if, if I feel like gray's not um, strong enough for me to see, I can make it red, I can make it brighter, 
and it's showing the affected areas. So, I mean, you could you have a lot of uh, leeway here on how strong or what color you want that to be. And again, it's only showing the mask. It's not actually doing that red to your photo. And so I could click new and then do it again. And again, it'll show me where I'm brushing on. So if you don't like it showing it right when you're doing it, you could unclick mask and then you can just brush it on and see what it's like, see the lower exposure happening, I guess. So now let's say I want to delete this. I can click that and just hit the delete button and it'll delete that one. I can click this one and I can hit the delete button also, but I actually liked the way that that looked. So now if I click new, I can raise the exposure. Now, something that sometimes people do is they click this and then they decide, oh, I want to add some more. And then they like raise the exposure or something and it's applying it to that one. So if you want to do another one, you have to click new. You can't, you just, and you'll, you'll quickly notice you'll do it once. You'll be like, oh wait, I want to fix that. So if I click new now and I come down and I want to like brighten up maybe the front of her shoes here. I feel like that's good. And now if I wanted to do another one, I could click new or I could hover over the other one and actually re-lower the exposure on that since I had raised it. And I feel like that's a good solid image. So now I can select this and I can hold down the shift button and select the last image, right click and hit sync settings. And I don't usually do local adjustments because it's so specific to an image. And if I applied local adjustments to this top image, if I applied it to this bottom image, it's not going to be in the same place, but you can, and then you can just edit those if you want to, if you don't want to worry about doing all the settings, especially if you used three or four different adjustment brushes, it might be nice to actually select the local adjustment button right here and have it apply those. So then you don't have to try to remember what the settings of each of those brushes were. So there's pros and cons to selecting the local adjustments. So if I go ahead and select that and hit okay, you'll notice that it applies the edit to all these images. So now I can select this image and you'll see the, the little pins. And that one actually, if I hover over it, it actually worked really well. And if I hover over here, it looks like it needs to actually be um, fixed a little bit because it needs to be up higher on the shoes. This one was adding a positive exposure, a higher exposure to the front of the shoes. So if I click that, I can click add and then I'll just add it up here and then I'll click erase and then I can just erase it from down here. Okay. So now if I click this, that shows there. If I click here, that's where I wanted it to be. So and then if I click over here, I actually need to add some right here. Let me show you. Well, let me click this one. Sorry. I actually need to add some right here. So if I click add, I have this one is activated. It's red. And so I can make my brush smaller and just add right here. And then I can click erase and erase right here. Okay. And then I can turn my mask off. And I like the way that looks better before there was a bright spot right in front of the shoes and I wasn't happy with the way that looked. So now I can click here. And again, I think I'm going to have to fix this one. So if I click mask, it'll show me the mask and now I can erase right here because I don't want it to be lowering the exposure on the shoes at all. And I need to click add and add to right here. And then I can click here and see, where it's adding that. So obviously we don't want it right there. So I'll click new and I'll apply it right here. And then I'll click erase and erase it right here. And actually I did it wrong. Whoops. Okay. I needed to do add. So first I need to erase and erase it off of right here. If I click new, it adds, it does a new pin. So that was my fault. And then I need to hit add and add it right here. And then I can click erase again and, and erase it off right here. Okay. So then if I turn off the mask, 
that's what this image looks like. And then I can still lower the exposure on it some so that it doesn't need to be as bright. And so these are those images. So now what I can do is, so I know inside of Bridge which images have been edited. I select the first one, hold down the shift key, select the last one, hit command one. So it changes those to one stars. And since my filter and bridge is only showing five stars, I um, will not see these. I don't want to make them zero stars because then they will blend in with the images that I did not pick to give the client. So I always keep some type of star rating. You could go from five to four, however you want to do it. You could also say, oh, I really want to blog this particular image. So you could make it a four. So I could make, if I really wanted to blog this image, I could make it a four or I could, and then it would still drop off that list since I'm only showing fives. And then I could show, I could look at my four stars and save those and blog those or whatever you want to do. So now if you hit cancel, it will cancel all the settings that you just did to your image. So don't hit cancel, just hit done. And then it'll, you can open up bridge again and you'll notice that there's 323 images and now those images disappeared and now there's only 320 images here. So then if I click here, I can click one or more stars. So right now there's 320 images. If I click that, now there's almost 1100 images because it's showing me images that I've already edited and ta you know, and had one star. And so now I can open these all into ACR when I'm done and save them as a JPEG. So I'll show you how I would save them as a JPEG. So if you click these, and I would open up all the images. I do, I will open up a thousand images into, uh, into ACR. It might take a couple seconds to load them all, but then you just select all of them. So I'll select the first one and then just scroll down until you get to the very last one. Hold down your shift button and select the last one and then hit save images. And then you can select the folder, select the different settings, make sure it's sRGB, and then hit save. And then I can walk away and you can custom name the image, whatever you want now. So you can name it Clarissa and Jacoby's wedding or um, Amber and Charlie's wedding, which is who's this wedding actually is, um, or pure Photoshop actions, Clarissa wedding, whatever you want to name your images. And then you can choose your file size and stuff like that. So, and then I just walk away and let it do its thing. And then uh, come back a few minutes later and it's done. And I can upload to the client website. So if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much.